this is season five of The Score, the Team Roping Journal's podcast where we cover the roping industry from top to bottom. This is where the team roping world talks. We talk through tough subjects, we talk big wins, and we talk real issues affecting the community. I'm your host and editor of the Team Roping Journal, Chelsea Schaefer. Hey everyone, this is Chelsea Schaefer. And I saved a really great episode for you to kick off Season 5. I am stoked you're all here again this year. Season 5. 5. You all have listened to this podcast so many times. I'm so grateful for Team Ropers who love to stay hooked to this industry with us. Uh, It's my... This project started five years ago. It was a passion project, and now I can't not do it. So glad you're all still here listening. Thank you for hanging with me. Today's episode is with Lance Robinson and Denny Gentry. They are the masterminds, two of the three masterminds behind the Riata Buckle, the latest and greatest program to hit the rope horse industry. Um, of course, Lance Robinson is the is from the racehorse industry. He's a former NFR qualifier. His son is Clint Robinson, obviously also an NFR qualifier in the tie down roping. Lance needs no introduction. He's a pretty popular guy in this industry. Denny Gentry also needs no introduction, the godfather of the sport of team roping, my longtime boss cohort. Now I think we're just friends, but anyway, it's great that we have worked together in this industry for a really long time. So I'm going to ask Lance a lot of questions up front to talk about how this all gets started, and then everybody hang in there because we will break down the nitty gritty of how the Riata Buckle is going to work. I'm going to talk to Denny about the money about the location, about how you can get your horse in. This is one of those conversations that if you love the sport of team roping, if you love the horse industry, period, it's an absolute don't miss. So with that said, I am going to let this roll into the interview. I don't want to, it's a kind of, you got to pay attention because we cover a lot in this episode. We go over uh, horse prices. We go over the supply and demand crisis in the horse industry right now. We talk about how the Riata buckle came to be and uh, where it's going. I really enjoyed this conversation. Obviously, if you know me, this is my passion, uh, this horse industry thing. Uh, It's where I come to team roping from. Um, So, hope you all enjoy. Today's episode is brought to you by Cactus Ropes and their Relentless Arsenal. At the commercial break, I'm going to have a special guest who knows a little bit more about the Relentless Arsenal than I do to tell you all about it. Guys, welcome so much to The Score. I'm so glad to get you both on the line for this call. I want to ask Lance a question first. Um, Can you give us a primer on how much of an impact the pink and ruby buckle has had on barrel racing? And then tell me about how that led you to the Riata buckle. Give Give us the scope there. Well, I don't know if it's fair to ask me how much of an impact it's had on the barrel racing. Mm-hmm. Community, but we we think from the feedback we get that it's been real positive and took us a minute to get it off the ground. But after that, uh, uh, we have a national barrel racing alliance that we put together and trying to do that with barrel racing. And I think I think it's moved a way forward. Horses are worth more. There's a lot of excitement behind it. Other people are picking up on it and doing some of the kind of same kind of things that we're doing. So I think it's all been positive so far. Denny, from your perspective, were you paying attention um, from while that while that was all going on? Did you take notice of it right away? Absolutely. When you're watching those sales and they start calling out the, the uh, if they're nominated in the pink buckle, and you watch the variances in the in the cash there, uh, you got to be blind not to see it, you know, and. and uh, and so that's what got my attention first. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And so how did you, Lance, how did you loop Denny in? Um, and, and why why roping and why now? Well, I don't know that we loop Denny in. In fact, I'm going to blame this all this mess on Denny. He's the one that, <laughs> he's the one that drug us into it. But... I, you know, to me, it's to me, it's a perfect fit because what Denny's done with the U.S. and World Series, you know, I mean, everybody knows about that. You got you've got to be hiding under a rock if you don't know what he's done to the team roping and 
how it's moved the whole sport and everything around it forward. So, you know, get combine and combine and pink and ruby buckle with Danny and the World Series U.S. concept is is a great deal. And you know, maybe using the pink buckle business plan to go into in partners with the so to speak the Danny and the World Series. It's it's really a way to move the industry forward and. That's that's really what we're about is the growth of the industry and you know Danny's pretty modest about it but you know it it changed everything not just little jackpots to big jackpots but it changed everything around it and, you know we part part of our mission is and the main part of our mission is to grow the industry but we want to grow it through the horses and we want to develop a, a roping horse breed of record that can really change and motivate people on how they think about roping. Mm -hmm. And um, so, Denny, where did the idea originally come from for you? Where did this passion for this side of things come from on the horse side? I'm sorry, Chelsea, I missed the first part of that. Was that for me? Yeah, that was for you. No worries. Well, you know, I... We spent 30 years working on the team roping side and getting the ropings to where they're all over and 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 for the ropers and, and getting the commissions right and the payoffs up and all that. And I was all for the roper, and, and I was done with that. You know, whenever I sold out and stepped away, um, I'd had enough. I mean, it was too many years and too many ropings and too many miles. But the supply and demand curve on the horses has really gotten out of whack. And, and we, we always talk about the horses on the top. Well, the availability of horses is a, is a big problem, and we've, we've got to get the volume up. That's, that's the key here. And, and we've got to produce more horses, and there's got to be a way to do it. And in my mind, this was a clear answer. Mm -hmm. We need to go at volume. We need to create more and more. There's horses, horses being bred specifically for this and get them into the mix quicker and not wait until they're five, six, seven, eight years old before they wash out of some other discipline. We need to go to thinking that way right off the bat. And each year have, you know, X thousand of horses thinking about going to team roping directly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, and it seemed like the... The industry was ready the night that we made that Facebook post. I don't remember what time it was. Some, sometime in the evening, uh, the the phones. T Lance, I'm not going to say it. Tell us about the response from the first moment that we released that information that this was going to happen. I don't know. I think the terminology I used with my phone rang off the hook. <laughs> We got bombarded by phone calls, and you know, which would tell me that there's there's a huge amount of interest, and the timing might be right for this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, I I think I I also also got a ton of phone calls. Denny, were, were people calling you? Were breeders calling you? Were ropers calling you? Oh, uh, we, we all of us were getting calls, and and that was the problem. I mean, we we had I mean we were just in the infancy stages of talking about this. And, that leaked and all of a sudden it all broke loose and and I think you're right I think the timing they were just waiting and, and uh, uh, Lance told me the other day Lance what'd you say 155 stallions so far yeah but we have we tried to stop it at 150 and we went to 55 and we're never going to go past 200 but we're going to wait a little bit here before we add any more and get this get the ones going that we have signed up, but we've literally had hundreds and hundreds of stallion owners contact us. So the response has been really good, and we appreciate every, appreciate everybody that got on board with us to help us. And you know, hopefully, these stallion owners they they have a whole different circle of influence than we do. And we all could get behind this, and it isn't that just our group at Danny's trying to put on a rope, and we really truly are trying to to make the industry where it's a lot more viable and bigger and, and really it's a brand new industry because we're trying to create a, create a roping horse breed. Mm -hmm. And and out of those hundreds of phone calls, how did you accept stallions into the program? What were some of the criteria you used? Well, I'm glad you asked that so everybody's not mad at us that aren't in, but what we tried to do is we tried to diversify and get 
I think I've said this before. Everybody, I mean, it's easy to, with records, to find out the best racehorse sire of all time, whether it's server or quarter horse, or the best barrel racing sire of all time. We don't know what the best roping horse sire is of all time because we don't have records. The AQHA wants to get behind us and help develop a record base for this to be able to keep track of who wins what and how they do it. You know, that'll be a big a big bite to chew off right off the bat because, you know, we're not accustomed to that. But with records comes investment dollars. And, you know, if we're going to make it bigger, we need investment dollars in this with us. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that answered your question there, but that's really the gist of the thing is that we'd like to do that. So we got horses from, you know, I have a racetrack background and that's kind of where I'm from a rodeo background. And so, you know, race horses and rodeos fit into with barrel races and bulldog and horses, but maybe not the other disciplines of rope. And so we tried to get heritage kind of horses. We tried to get cutting and rainers in there. We tried to diversify and you can almost call them a, a subspecies of the species of quarter horses. And we tried to get kind of a, you know, a cross section of everything in there. So anybody that came in would either ha already have some of them or have an affinity to that kind of a horse. Yeah. My, my mouth kind of fell open when I saw that list for the first time. They, they were taking the, the accepting the applications in Utah and I didn't get to see it till it was complete and they sent it over and I, I hadn't got to compliment them yet on that, but I went to look at those names down there and you know, <laughs> every major name in the industry is there mm -hmm. i mean you get to look and every, i was surprised that some of those people climbed on right now i mean i just absolutely flabbergasted it's exciting because it, it is a cross-section of it's i think it's probably the only incentive program that brings together that wide of a breadth of horses in the industry it's really cool um and for anybody who wants to see that list it is available at riata buckle dot com um right now so people can go look at it and see if their stallion is on the list or if the stallion that their babies are by is on that list so uh, but you you did mention that you're not going to go over 200 so that leaves about 45 exactly 45 spots how and when are you bringing those other 45 into the fold well in a, in a way we've kind of got to be fair on how we do that and the people that I mean, the people that got to us first in the, with these array of horses were the ones that got in. And eventually, I guess we're going to have to, what we, I guess what we'd like to do is down the road, maybe we'd, we'd put a couple of those slots up for sale in our Riata Buckle horse sale. Mm -hmm. and, people, and then if people have a way to get in, and maybe that's not the best way to do it. Cause maybe, maybe we'll change, but we've got to, we just we want to stay here for a minute and then go on. And part of part of our program is these, the stallion owners are doing the heavy lifting with us, and the people that breed to those stallions and 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 buy horses by those stallions, they're they're doing a lot of the heavy lifting. And you can call it added money or whatever you want when we get we go to the ropings and rope for it. But the the ropers are the big beneficiaries of the whole deal. And so you know just just seeing the value that the pink and ruby buckle slots have started, I guess you'd say command, the price they command. We, we would like to, to get where these slots have some real value. And I think as it grows and down the road, then if, you know, if we sell a couple of them, it'll help the existing stallion owners to see value in what they've done. And if the, the people outside of that group see real value, they'll, they'll want to come in and purchase the stallion slot and get their horse in it. Sure. Now, Denny, I think this question's for you because you probably talk to the most ropers in the amongst the three of us. Ropers have traditionally shot, you know, they're they're a practical bunch for the most part. You have to feed babies. Babies can cut their legs off in fences. Uh, babies can do all kinds of different tricks to make them not worth anything by the time they're ready to show. What do you think the everyday roper is going to start embracing the breeding game? I mean, it seems like that's you're hedging your bets that direction. Oh, well, I don't think I'm hedging my bet. I mean, we've got a I've got a clear formula on it. I, mm -hmm. Of course, over the years, through the years, I've always um, I've come to find out how it works with the cowboys. I mean, when you're in phase one, there's no way in the world it's going to work. 
<laughs> and phase two, it can't last. And phase three, it's, or uh, phase two, they're never going to pay it. And phase three, it's never going to last. <laughs> and we have just proved that so many times now. And, and it usually starts with the money in there. World Series, you know, we put that guaranteed money up right up front and said, we're giving it away whether there's one or two of you. And so um, we come out right now and said, the first event's going to pay $4 million. Now, we have uh, uh, four divisions right now. No need to break that out. We don't need to do it on on, on this because there's going to be a lot of advertisement about the four different divisions there. And we don't know how we're going to cut that money up completely. Now, we have added on a, in terminology of the rope or not the horse show people, an open division on there that we are working on details of right now, but it's going to be sponsor driven. It's not going to be over in the stallion money piece of it. And we do have sponsors that we're talking to right now that are interested in handling that. But the goal here is, is that we're guaranteeing a minimum of 2 million right now. And those four between those four divisions, if, if we're lucky at all, we can be at 3 million by the end of August. And, and that's, that's just, that's wishful thinking maybe a little bit, but the goal here is, is to get to a, a spot you know, on year two or year three, where we're doing a million dollars per division. And as you know, it took us a long time to mm-hmm. get to that point with world series. And, and the point of talking about the money is pretty simple. Whenever you, you get a million dollars of rope and, Cowboys are going to figure out how to get into that program. Mm-hmm. And, and they, the Futuri thing, talking about Futuri may t- turn them off, but I think they'll figure out right quick that half of the money there is going to go to guys on unnominated horses. And the, and once they come out and they see it, they're going to go, this makes no sense. I need to be on a nominated horse. And that backup horse is going to suddenly be, be out of those stallions. And then the momentum begins to move the direction that we want to go and these stallions begin to have i mean we we start to change the industry year by year by year and it takes a while for that to happen but but i'm completely confident that um and and i'll say this let me say this about the three stages back there Mm -hmm. um someone's going to say oh there's not enough horses out there for them to have that over there next this fall and 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 I'm sitting here telling all my people, boy, I hope that's true. I hope only 20 teams show up in each one of those, and we give away seven or eight hundred thousand dollars on a 20 team jackpot. Um, I don't think I'll have to say anything the next year. Mhm. Mhm. <laughs> what do mm-hmm. you think? <laughs> I think you. I think that's spot on. <laughs> so we got the feature head row. And then we've got the future heel rope and then the future light heel rope. And then we have what we have, like I would call a hybrid of everything, which is the all around. It's a variation of two. It hits a lot of different things. It's a 34 foot head rope. Just a great rope that we use around here as far as just letting heel do everything with it. I think it's a great rope. And I'm always careful to say this. I, for kids, it's no big deal, but I think kids and women, or anyone that just loves a life heel rope, or that feels like you can't keep a good time with a, with a heel rope because of the weight of most heel ropes. But I think the future head rope and heel rope were such great, such a great mix. That's why we added the light uh, heel rope and the all around. And while we didn't change colors, because sometimes when you change the littlest things, even like a color change can have a huge difference in feel. And so uh, everybody's like, well, why it, it, it can be a little bit confusing, but you just have to know exactly, you know, what you're asking for. We've learned stuff through the last few years as well, when you have a big, a mixture that works so well, you know, like it was, with the risk of it being a little bit confusing, it's worth it because they, the feel is something that people love, and we just want to have 
some version of that rope that fits everyone because it's such a good formula. I think that's the main theme of all the stuff that we've been doing. Um, now, this is this is a topic that, that comes up, but only a little bit. And, and I'm curious, this is going to be similar to the ruby and the pink buckle. In barrel racing, they do not judge futurity horses um, on form or, or anything like that. How do you guys both feel about the time-only versus judged aspect of this? Go ahead, Lance. You go first, and I'll follow you up. I'll clean, I'll clean it up for you. <laughs> All right. Well, Chelsea, I, I that's not even an issue for me. I mm -hmm. mean, everybody, when I say everybody, let me rephrase that. The, like 99.9% .9 of the people that call me, the first thing they ask is, this, is this going to be judged? Mm -hmm. and, you know, when I say no, they say, oh, good. So... I mean, I don't know whether that's a that's a good thing for us or a bad thing or or an indifferent thing, but we aren't going to have it judged, and uh, I think that opens the door to a lot more people can be interested in being there if it's not judged. And so we we've, we've made a decision, and it wasn't an easy decision just to say, "Oh, we're not going to judge anything," but we you know we put a lot of time and effort into coming up with the idea that it's not going to be judged and, and that's where we're we're going to play right now and you know and, I mean Danny says the best is he told me early on he said hey if we see a problem we're going to fix it right now we're not going to wait till for a year or two yeah but that's where we're at right now and I I don't see that change in myself and but I think the other thing is, I'm going to say this real quick. Mm -hmm. I think that what we're going to do on our fraternity, it's going to bring a whole different group. And Kenny would know more about this than I do. But I think it's going to bring a whole different group of ropers out that haven't been coming and competing. Because I think a lot of these ranchers, trainers kind of people, they feel like if, if it, they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody if they're riding a four- or five-year-old. And those, those kind of people never get a finished horse because they sell it too soon. Mm -hmm. And so I think, I think there's a level of ropers out there that this is going to be exciting for them. We're going to have an older age group of horses where everybody can rope. And we want to do it just like Denny did the World Series or U.S. to deal. Everybody can rope from here to there and everywhere. And we have these horses that we, we develop a breed that where. Now these people have some value when they're raising these horses. Mm -hmm. well, and, I, and I'll back him up on that. I mean, I agree with him 100%. It's a non-issue because, um, you know, we said right from the start, we're not, we, we, everybody else in the horse fraternity business, whether it be the history of the AQHA on their judged events or all these fraternities that have come along since then, um, we have no intention of competing with them on what they do, which is judged in time. Uh, um, I don't want to compete with them. They're doing a, whatever. They're, theirs is based on training and trainers, and that's great. Uh, it, it, but we don't want to get into that deal. Our deal is going to start with the ropers, the mass of the ropers, and we're starting on the other end of the spectrum from where they're at. And hopefully we all meet in the middle here at some point and, we, and, it's, and, it, and it'll work. We're playing on a different game than what they're all playing on. And and back to what I said before the last stepped off, and the, I promise that those people that are worried about that issue, um, if the money gets strong enough, I think that they'll swallow it and come on over and play with us. <laughs> Sounds fair. <laughs> Um, so Lance, with, with all that said and, and using barrel racing as an example, because, you know, pink buckle and ruby buckle are, are succeeding well and they haven't run the other fraturities out of business. Do you think Riata is going to compete with or complement the existing rope horse fraturity structure? I think it's going to be a great benefit. We, we failed if it's not a great benefit for the team roping industry. I'll just say it that way. Fair. That's awesome. 
And I think I think there's plenty of room for everybody. I mean, I've had some I've had some people talk in the barrel race, and well, they're bringing up this other deal. You know, that doesn't look good or whatever. And, uh, you know, the comment I make to everybody that that talks about it's just going to hurt something. I always say, well, you think all those NFR Cowboys would be real upset if we had four NFR a year for them? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know and the answer is simple right yeah so if we create something like this to help the industry and i think danny would say the same thing but all my people in my camp we hope other people come up with another idea mm -hmm. to where this is bigger and better because it just it just brings more value to the industry of roping you know and you know, the breakaway's on its way up now. We're going to have a huge breakaway rope. And we're going to, you know, we're all about the roping business here. Not only just the team roping, but the breakaway roping and roping horses. If they if they need roping horses, we think we're going to start the engine rolling to create roping horses. Now, Danny, if he feels like it, he can tell you the number that he he speculates on how many horses we need when he feels like he's got this grown out with the number of team ropers, and it's a big number. Denny, so, do you care to tell, to share? Oh, no, I'm just guessing at it, but I, but I do know how many teams are running here and how many mm -hmm. people are playing and how many, I mean, and you go look at the market on how many guys train their own horses and how many are in the marketplace looking, and the, just the need in, it, in itself, I mean, you uh, it, it, it's one thing, and you don't want to say it for the stallion owner and say we we need to stabilize the price of horses because there's always going to be a top and a bottom on this market. But we've got to get enough enough horses in, in the deal where there is a top, middle, and a, and a bottom. And and we used to have that, and mm -hmm. we don't have it anymore. And it's going to take a lot of horses to make that happen again. Hmm. And and speaking of the sales, Lance in the article we did in the Team Roping Journal, uh, I just happened to ask you a question off the cuff to explain, like, you know, what the plan was with the sales. And and because I don't take for granted that Team Ropers read every single word that I write, could you <laughs> explain to me why you have the sale at the Ruby and the Pink Buckle? And, and it's, you know, you, you said it's partially, you know, mostly for the stallion owners. Um, but then should we also anticipate that same thing for Riata Buckle? Yeah, I think we will. I, you know, and the reason we have sales of the pink and the ruby buckle is because everybody's asked us to have one. Mm -hmm. Not only the stallion owners, but everybody else. And so we're gonna we're gonna try to have a way to market these horses to help them at the Riata. We're gonna have a Riata buckle sale, which we can't sell all the horses there, but we have some other ideas coming down the road that we'll have a way to help breeders that breed to these stallion owners be able to help market their horses mm -hmm. very good um now lance the way you've been talking about things it seems like your end goal is how creating this this rope horse breed that seems to be where your passion lies in this and denny you you bring up the number about numbers larger volumes larger volumes can you can you guys elaborate that? Is, do you have the same goal, or, or are those two goals existing separately but equally with this program? No, I think it's the same. I, I, you know, I don't think we're, we're out of sync at all on that. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, I hear what he's saying, and I know what he's saying. I, I think that it's more complicated than, than just a rope horse breed because I think what – Ultimately, we're going to wind up with is a head horse breed and a heel horse breed. Yeah, yep. because I don't think it's going to be the same, the same combination. It already is that way to a degree. Mm -hmm. And and but overall, I think from a, from a higher, um, from a thirty thousand foot view, what Lance says, at least we're going to have um, a, a horse, a roping horse breed that we can point to. And, and I don't think that, that anybody's really got, I mean, we, you can go back to the old breeds that everybody said were the roping horses, and they're really not hardly a factor in this in this particular market anymore. And, and a lot of these new studs that are in here um, are starting to show some versatility. You're seeing them come out of barrel racing and go to cutting, and, and the 
they're roping on them. And, and a lot of these, I, I know some of the, the fraternity horses that are in barrel race, I'm seeing the husbands riding them at the rope. And so I'm already watching this happen, this this development of these horses that have lots of flexibility. Yeah, our, our reigning world champion barrel racer, Jordan Briggs, her husband, uh, placed on that horse at the American Rail Horse Maturities as a four-year-old. So it's, a, right. it's already happening. Yeah, it's already happening. And I, and I think that goes hand in hand because a lot of the barrel horse, the girls say that, that the best thing for my horse is to have my husband rope calves or team rope or whatever yeah. on it. You know, and I agree with Danny, a head horse and a heel horse is a, almost a different species, you know, and a heel horse is more similar to a breakaway horse or a calf horse. But that's why I think with the kind of stallions, I mean, maybe these, maybe these big 16-hand race horses – won't sire heel horses. Mm-hmm. You know, on the right mare, they prob- they probably will. Mm-hmm. But if, anyway, there'll be something there that, you know, I'm of the older generation, so I want to ride a bigger horse. When I was growing up, we rode bigger horses than they do now. You know, they fit my swing better. They, you know, it just feels better to ride them mm-hmm. than these little 14-hand horses. They just don't feel like there's enough under you, you know, for <laughs> me. But that's not, that's not saying they're wrong, you know. My son that rode... He, he doesn't like to ride, you know, big 16-hand horses, 15-3 or whatever. And it's like, but, you know, again, he's saying, you know, that we've got enough cross-section of horses in here that there'll be something for everybody if they need to get a horse to participate with us. Perfect. Well, I think we've made everybody, if they've listened this far into the podcast... We're saving the information that they actually need to know to enter this event for last, which was strategic. So, Denny, where are you guys on all the administrative stuff? Like, who works for the Riata Buckle? Is the when's the website gonna have information on it? And where is the Riata Buckle based? Give us some. Well, we had really good plans until you leaked that thing on Facebook, <laughs> and we got then we really got behind all of a sudden. So you you kind of put us in a little bit of problem there too but, but we uh, we we're, we've got uh, staff working on the website right now we've got the stallion list up where everybody can see the stallions but we're, we're going to try we're working night and day to try to get that website up where they know all the information about everything that's happening where it's going on and all that um we're going to develop our own staff and and right now it, it's uh, uh chad and uh, uh lance and i and and Trevor Robinson, Clint Robinson, uh, Brooke Stevenson, and, and and Lucas, and a couple of my people down here. Mm-hmm. And so we're going to try to do this with about five or six of us to start off with, and then just fill in as we as we go. And then the office is going to be located there, probably in the same office structure with Ruby and and. Uh, pink buckle but those staffs will not cross over and those lines will not cross over it's going to have its own staff and so um and then of course the the date of the event everybody's going to want to know when that is and, mm-hmm. and when the nomination deadlines and all that stuff the information we're just telling everybody right now is just sit on your hands we're going to give you plenty of time to get nominated um uh, we will have all that information up there shortly. We do have a, a date and a location at Lazy E right now, um, although we, in the last uh, week or so, we've been bid by by another city, and um, and and we obviously want to take a, take a look at that before we completely lock in. And um, uh, so, hmm. I'm, I'm not going to say it's tentative, but but I'm just saying we're 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 so early in this. Everything sounds like probably and maybe and. And um, um, and what I, I'm trying to uh, uh, infer as much as I can, as vague as I can. How's that? <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds fair. Hey, you mentioned Chad. Um, he couldn't be on the call with us today, but he's he's a critical part of this. Lance, can you introduce your partner, Chad, even though he do- he doesn't get to visit with us right now? Well, he's a. Uh, Originally, this idea came from the halter horse industry when Chad tried it on, you know, the, say the pink buckle business plan came from, from his idea in the halter horse industry. Mm-hmm. And we, we share an office together in another company that we have, and we just got talking about it one day, and he'd been so successful there with the halter horses that he, 
he says, hey, why don't we try it in a barrel race? And then, you know, I'm in the racehorse business, and we've kind of always maybe tinkered a little bit about a little bit with the barrel racing industry because it fits our racehorse and theirs. And so I was kind of interested in it for that reason, and that's how we kind of started it. So anyway, when pink and ruby buckles seemed to be taken off pretty good, Danny came along at the right time, and we decided to do this. I think when, uh, whenever Denny Gentry gets involved, it just so happens to be the right time. He's got a knack for that. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. I hope so. I hope that third time's like the first two. <laughs> I think you, ma I think you well, make it the right time. I'm going to say this, Chelsea. I hope he changes the industry as much as he changed it when he started the U.S. Broke the Association. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I am and glad. If, and if he does, if he does that, then he'll be doing his job. <laughs> but uh, he's going to have to. He's going to have to do a lot to change it as much as he did that first time. Man, uh, there's nowhere to go but up on this uh, horse deal. So I think I think he can. I think it's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. But he moved the needle so far the first time. It's going to be hard to move it past that. You're not the wrong. Third time. So. Well. <laughs> uh, we're gonna take we're gonna take a swing at it so well guys that's that's about what i had thank you so much for your time is <laughs> there anything you very much, is, appreciate you covering it absolutely is there anything any other burning desires that we need to talk about all uh, right chelsea we we appreciate you a lot we, we're grateful for what you do for the industry hey glad to be here glad to keep you all up all night with your phones ringing um <laughs> Better. Yeah. Glad they're right. calling you and not me right about now. So thanks, guys. There you go. All right. Thanks. All right. Talk Thank to you. you soon. Bye bye. See ya. Bye. Thank you all so much for listening to this episode of The Score. I appreciate you. I hope you all enjoyed it. Remember, today's episode was brought to you by Cactus Ropes. That's cactusropes.com. That's where you got to go to learn everything you need to know about the Relentless Arsenal and the rest of the Cactus Ropes team.